everyone, welcome to the Receive Podcast. This week brought to you by time. Hymns and Good Morning from Hell. I'm Gus. I'm Gavin. I'm Barbara. Oh, I'm Jeff. And I'm Gus. Are we d- doing stupid accents? There's a different light on some of these cameras. What? what? Oh, the lights changed. The, well, it's uh, amplified. Yeah, it's big. Uh, we got new cameras. Got oh for Extra Life. Thank you, Black Magic. No, for oh. the podcast. Oh, oh. For for this. The for thing every that other production we do, fifty-two <laughs> times a year, as opposed to the thing that happens one time a year. Listen, it's an important weekend, Gus. It is. Watch Extra Life, twenty-four hour stream, starting eight a.m. Central Time this Saturday, Good where we raise money off. for the kids. Yes, it's luckily it's the weekend after daylight savings. Yeah. So it's not con- hopefully not confusing anymore for Ours anyone. Ours is the weekend after daylight savings. I think the one that just passed yeah. didn't, wasn't that like the official Extra Life yeah. weekend? Was huh? it? I think so. Yeah, because I know Kind of Funny was doing their their. Uh, do we miss Extra Life and the community? We did this we did last year too. Stream. Yeah, we always offset ours because because we're better. <laughs> Everyone did it without. Everyone did it without. Yeah, yeah. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So it'll be twenty four hours. We don't have to since we didn't fall back. It's not twenty five hours. Yeah, which we had to do two or three years. Two ago? or three years ago. Yeah. It's right. easier That's that extra it. hour that makes all the difference. It really does, especially if you're there the whole time. Yeah. Oof. Man, I had the fucking dumbest problem this morning. Oh, oh well, I want to try and guess, but there's no way. I, I got locked out of my, like, my online account. Is that what you were bitching about, not being able to yeah, use Yeah, I was, I was really mad when you got that email. <laughs> Read the email that you sent us. <laughs> it was great. <laughs> Let me find it. Um, so whenever I... <laughs> Uh, I, whenever I do stuff for the podcast, like throughout the week, uh, <laughs> if I if I see <laughs> funny stuff, I'll keep a running document in an online service with like remember. all the links and everything. And normally on Monday morning, I'll email everyone on the podcast that night and say, "Hey, don't forget to bring three or four topics to talk about. Here are all the topics I have listed, and I'll include a link to that document." Mm-hmm. The email I sent this morning was, <laughs> "I was really mad. This was like the height of my anger. This was at ten twenty seven a.m." I think people will be able to tell based on your wording. And the, <laughs> please bring message. three to four topics or stories to talk about tonight. I normally share my Google Doc with my links, but I'm locked out of my motherfucking work Google account at the moment, so I can't. <laughs> so how did you get locked out? I don't know. I went, so like, my email program on my laptop worked, my phone still worked, but when I went to open my doc or to like try to sign into YouTube, it was like, sign in. So like, my email address, my password, and it's like, password not correct. It's like, well, I know it's the correct password. Like, all my other applications are still working. I haven't changed it. You use LastPass. I use a management service. A management service. So then I was like, I'm gonna, I'll, I'll just reset it. So I clicked on forgot password. And uh, I was like, forgot password. And you have to type in the fucking stupid ass captcha. I found one that I could finally read, typed it in, and it just like loaded forever. Wouldn't, find, wouldn't ever load. Then uh, rebooted my computer. Same thing. Waited 30 minutes, tried again. It eventually got to the point where it's like, okay, forgot your password, captcha, click. And then it gave me a message that said, there's a problem with your account. Contact your domain administrator. It's the same. It's the same link every week, though, right? It's the same document that it you is just the same docu- but I just So why don't you just ask us to I add you as a, like from a different? I account. could have also just looked at my sent items. No, because it might, it might have asked you, me to log in. If I'm going to, if I'm going to edit it, are yeah. you back in? Did you get it sorted? I did out? get back in. Did you have to contact your administrator? I contacted our administrator, and our administrator said, "There's oh, uh-uh, from our end, there's nothing weird with your account." I said, yeah, <laughs> cool. Except I can't get the fuck in. <laughs> so but, how, how did you resolve the situation? So they, th- my administrator had to reset my password for me. And then uh, I was able to get in and reset my password. What did you have to give her in advance? <laughs> I don't know. Some dot com. <laughs> uh. Anyway, something back in. That was like so the, you came the, on Adam Ellis? The, 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 <laughs> I think it finally, finally got it resolved like at 11. So I, I got here... A little before nine, so it's like over the first two hours of my morning, I couldn't get into my fucking podcast notes. I was, I was. Whatever furious. will we ever talk about without your notes, Cuss? Well, we could talk about my uh, Judge Judy audition. How'd it go? Did we talk about that yet on the podcast? We, we said that we were gonna film it. I saw some of the footage. <gasps> could we show the footage? We we have of our, like our first rough edit done. I don't know if I want to show it yet. So you oh. haven't sent it yet. No, but uh, the stuff of you at the Capitol I thought was great. So <laughs> Wait, there's <laughs> more than just that. There's a lot. So uh, the, the, like the, I, right, I, I was looking at it right before we started. So I have to give notes and we have to we have to make it look as good as it can. Where to else my chances. do you do your acting? Because it's all just you sitting in an audience <laughs> and then like we went to some parks and, and stuff. And, you know, do, just in do case you think it'll be extra there. tragic if you don't get it on the show now. If nothing else, it's funny. We just got a video we can post on social. <laughs> we show on the podcast. I was, think, I think you're ensuring that you won't get picked. 
based on how much effort you're putting into it. Probably. They're going to look at this and go, we don't want to be a part of a bit. They're not doing this. <laughs> this guy's going to try to overtake the case and just stand up and be one of the main actors all of a sudden. We'll Are there actors on that show or is that real? <laughs> I don't know. Why I'm are sure you laughing? it's probably exaggerated. I'm sure you have to. Uh, yeah. Is it Judge Judy a real judge? I think so. I think I mean, I'm sure real she's a real cases. judge. I think she was. She's doesn't, a real rich judge. Doesn't yeah, it say at the beginning that it's like real cases? I think so. Something like that. Gotta believe TV. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, I think she like, was a judge in New York State or something. That uh, I'm proud to say is one of the reality uh, programs uh, or genres I'm not into at all. You used, I don't, to, you used to watch that show though. I, I used to watch Judge Wapner. I don't know that I've ever watched Judge Judy. I thought we did when I lived with you, like briefly went through a so phase. It's Maybe judge it, Judy, it was a brief phase. If we is did. she not the OG TV judge? No. Oh no, got oh, okay. God no. You ever watch Rain Man? Got to watch Wap. Wapner. Oh, okay. With Doug Llewellyn. What, what what years was that? Oh, that would have been like eighty. I'm gonna guess. Okay. I'm, I'm gonna look it up. So you look it up. I'm gonna guess eighty seven. Shit, eighty six to ninety four. Would be the the. People's Court with Judge Wapner. Oh, People's Court. Judge yeah. Wapner was eighty-one to ninety-three. Uh, I was off on the end by a year and a bunch on the beginning. Presented by Doug Llewellyn and Harvey Levin. Yeah. <laughs> Judge Judy's the best, though. She reminds me a lot of my uh, my grandmother. <laughs> Does she? Yeah. Just takes no bullshit. Is your grandmother's name Judy? It is not. It is Hazel. Hmm. Um, you don't hear that name anymore. <laughs> It's actually, I was going to tell a couple stories on this podcast. Uh, so my older brother just got married this weekend. Yay, congratulations. To uh, his longtime girlfriend, Julia. Congratulations. How long were they together? Uh, I want to say mean, seven say or eight it's years. It's a long time. I feel like yeah. I can't imagine them not together. They vetted each other at this point. Yeah, they actually yeah. met through Rooster Teeth. So no. you're welcome, um, Stephen. Even though he introduced me to Red versus Blue, so let's not talk about that. Um, but... Trevor was spending a lot of time with my family over the weekend because I was doing bridesmaids things. And when the wedding was getting started, he was sitting with my grandmother, who I call my bubby in uh, <laughs> the Jewish religion. And they were sitting together. And while they were waiting for the ceremony to start, she takes his arm and she, she starts how, like... How old's your bubby? <sighs> I'm going to get it wrong. Like late 80s? Okay. Um, she starts... She takes his arm and starts shaking it because she likes to shake things for emphasis. Mm -hmm. And she goes, let me frighten you. My husband, my late husband, he graduated in 1952. <laughs> and like she said it as if she wanted to Is she Dracula? Scare. She does kind of sound like Dracula when she's being mean. <laughs> or not mean, when she's trying to scare someone. Did it scare him? He just started laughing. Why would that be scary? <laughs> and then later on in the night, uh, he's like, I'm going to ask your bubby to dance. And I was like, okay, I don't know if she'd be down for she's that single. kind of thing. She's single now. Um... And so she uh, gets up and starts dancing with him, and I, she's having a great time. And then, unbeknownst <coughs> to me, during this time, we are all dancing, she goes over to him and she goes, I'm going to put you in my will. And I'm like, I'm not even in your will, bunny. Because <laughs> you don't she, dance with her. And then she started calling Trevor her boyfriend all weekend. And she's like, don't look at other women. Oh, You're you gotta my be, boyfriend. you got to be careful. <laughs> like, Do you think they were ever alone together? Probably. You got to get in the will some way, right? Yeah. <laughs> the will doesn't write itself. <laughs> well, it sounds like it was a smashing success. It was. Uh, new couple of 2020. Trevor and my bubby. Would you be mad if they hooked up? Kevin, <laughs> yes. <Would> you... <laughs> so what? <laughs> okay, would you be more mad if Trevor hooked up with her or if Gus did? <laughs> also, wait, I do. Gus, I have to tell you this. So, uh, I, I'm scared to know what this reminded her of. So, because my bubby is somewhat aware of Rooster Teeth and the community and, and the different Rooster Teeth sure. shows, knowing that Stephen and Julia were getting married and they had met on Rooster Teeth and there was going to be Rooster Teeth people there, she kept asking where you were. She want, <laughs> she's like, I want to meet Gus. <laughs> she How weird. doesn't know anyone except you, Gus. Well, she knows the best. I mean, yeah. the most memorable. So, you might meet her if I ever get married. You come to my wedding. Mm -hmm. You can meet my bubby. Okay. It's a, it's a, it's a date, bubby. <laughs> <laughs> Hazel. <laughs> Good memory. Um, it's an unusual name. You don't hear that name anymore. It's true. It's a very, it's the kind of name that a Gus would date. <laughs> Gus and Hazel. I've got an yeah. extra. I've already got an old lady name. <laughs> Is she in uh, Octogen Anal? Oh, God. <laughs> it, it's already really loose. It, it's fine. 
I don't like this I know conversation. it's bad when, when the, the control room's groaning. <laughs> Did you watch any of the, um, you know, the uh, Apple TV Plus came out? Has anybody watched any of those shows that came out? Anybody watch, <laughs> anybody even aware of Apple TV Plus? Yeah, oh, hold on. It came out? It came out. I, I'm not even being an asshole. On Friday. Really? It launched. Oh. I thought that was coming out like next year or something. Mm-hmm. It launched on Friday. Yeah, I was using With all mine. those shows and stuff? Some of them, yeah. Is I, the is the the uh, the one with the or the uh, morning show? The, the morning show out? Th- the first three episodes. No shit. They got uh, three episodes of the morning show, three episodes of For All Mankind. Uh, I want to say also three episodes of C and Dickinson. They got that Queen of the Elephants show. For All Oprah Mankind thing. is the space one, right? Yeah. What's C in Dickinson? C is the one with Jason Momoa where it's like in a post-apocalyptic future where nobody can, where everyone's blind and like there's like a child born that can see. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, it, it didn't look that good to me. Uh, well, you know, any any Momoa vehicle was a good vehicle, right? That guy, he can act. But um, the morning show is really good. Yeah. I, uh, I watched it before I read any reviews of it. Uh, some of the reviews I read were very middling for it. Like, I wouldn't have watched it if I'd read those reviews. But I thought it was really well done. It was really good. Very... Can, I, can I buy the episodes on Xbox Video? No. Damn. You can watch them on your phone. Maybe I'll do that. Yeah, yeah it was weird, because I was using my Apple TV and it popped up. And I was like, oh, I guess this launched. And then it said, because you have a phone, you get a year for free. Yeah. It's pretty generous, isn't it? Oh, yeah. I didn't get that. I- Emily got that over the weekend. I haven't got it yet. Did they send an email they send you or something? No, it's like... When you sign up, like in on your Apple TV, oh, I don't or have when an you TV. when you just use the fucking app, <laughs> pull TV. That, <laughs> just use the app on your phone, <laughs> Grandpa. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's it's really good. I was impressed. I thought the morning show was really good. I thought For All Mankind was also really good. How but many how many episodes of that are out? Three. So it's like you start watching. And it was like, oh, I'm really into this. Now I got to wait till Friday. For how many episodes way. will there be? Ten, I think. Okay, ten of each. And they are they have a f- full slate of programming or? Yeah, I mean they've got I mean the shows that I mentioned and they're kind of I think they're kind of soft launching it or slow rolling it because gotcha. like you said you weren't aware I don't think that they're really emphasizing that it's out and they're not a they're not launching with like a giant back catalog of licensed programming or mm, not really no. they're just focusing on originals mm-hmm. okay interesting yeah so I'm I'm sure once they have more of a catalog they'll start pushing it more until eight minutes ago i if you'd asked me i would have told you it was coming out in fall of 2020 and i think disney plus comes out like in two weeks no i think it comes out like on the 18th or the 19th with the mandalorian of november is that coming out uh, i don't know what the launch day on that is but yeah that should be uh disney plus pre-order available now november 12th oh shit that's next week that's next Ooh. tuesday is it u.s only the apple one i don't know i live in the u.s so that's all that matters to me <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Very gust response. The Mandalorian. Let's see. The trailers for that look good. I know. That's why I want to see it. I, I had not watched any of the trailers for... Uh, oh yeah, it starts November 12th. Uh, I had not watched any of the trailers for the morning show. I went in not really knowing anything. But yeah, The Mandalorian, November 12th. Oh, that's great. Have you guys started watching Living With Yourself at all? No, I did. Yet. I watched, I watched all of that in last weekend, I think. All of it? Damn. Yeah. Was it good? It's good. It's yeah, how, very... how far are you? How many episodes have you seen? I, I'm starting episode five. Okay. Start watching. What is it like? Eight episodes? It's something like that. Yeah, I think I it's eight. It was ten, maybe. I'm I've been sure. on a cutthroat kitchen run. That's what I watch on Netflix. Yeah, Where is that? Okay. Uh, it's on Netflix or Hulu. What's um, the hook on that? It's Alton Brown's like cooking competition show, and I kind of like to hate watch it because uh, I think I hate all of the the cast. Mm. Um, it's one of the, it's like it's like Chopped where they have a different four contestants every episode. Eight episodes. Or but. Uh, but the the hook on it is Alton Brown gives everybody twenty five thousand dollars in cash, and that's one person will win the cooking show, and however much money they have left over at the end is how much they win. But then he'll bring out like devices, and plop devices to fuck with each other, and they can bid on it. And so you're spending your potential winnings on protecting yourself from getting fucked over. Like an episode I saw that a guy lost is they brought up a set of stairs, and it was like seven feet high, and he had a bunch of uh, poles with knives and forks and stuff 
tied to them, and he had to do all of his cooking prep from there because somebody else paid like nine thousand dollars to force him to use that. Jesus. Oh my God. And, was he but like the, a big competitor? I guess like he was. No, they just it's it's not really. They're all like I would say that they're at the level that they could probably audition for Hell's Kitchen, but maybe not get on it. Does that make sense? <laughs> yeah. Um, like not a, like not as good, not good enough to be on Top Chef, but good enough to like they know what they're doing in the like kitchen. Like middle chef. Yeah, you, like middle chef. Like eh, chef. Hell's Kitchen or Master Chef. No, I'm at Hell's Kitchen. Hell's, okay. Hell's Kitchen is a cooking competition where they the, who aren't that I mean, good? the people on Hell's Kitchen you look at and you're like they're not that good. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Okay. Yeah, they're, they're that's why I say they're, they're yeah. like that that tier. Can we do that um, work? Like, could I t- tape a bunch of pencils to Jeremy's head? Well, didn't you him... all put his desk like 20 feet in the air? Yeah, it's yeah. stuff like that, or one where they they had to make like sub sandwiches or like hoagies, and they, oh, it? I got a great one Subs last or night. Hoagies. Uh, I'll, I'll skip that one. This is a better example. They like one dude. One of the challenges was dental floss. And the person that lost, and also like if you win the bid, then you get to force one of the other people to do it, not not necessarily all of them. So if you don't like somebody, you're like, you can only use dental floss to cut all of your food for the oh rest my of the God. episode. So like <laughs> slicing through meat like you're like like a like you're cutting somebody's throat, you know? And it's just I watch it just because well, hey, Alton Brown's adorable, but also uh, it's just fascinating how clever the punishments are that they come up with. What's and it I, called again? It's called Cutthroat Kitchen. And the people that compete are insufferable, but Alton Brown's great, and the challenges are fantastic. And so I watch it just to mine for ideas for like achievement hunter and rooster teeth stuff. Um, but I recommend that one just because it's cool to watch how they fuck with people and the interesting ways with which, like one, this dude who they, one of the challenges was another dude, uh, they set it up so there were eggs on the bottom, on the heels of his shoes, <laughs> and he had to walk around on his tippy toes, and every time he broke an egg, he lost $500. Oh my God. <laughs> Did they replace them when he would break one? Yeah, he would break one, and they would put another egg oh on. Oh my God. And, uh, and he lost, dude lost a couple grand. <laughs> yeah. Just trying to cook. Maybe trying to walk around the kitchen. They don't even make new episodes of that show anymore. Uh, I don't know. I'm on. I'm just on season seven. I don't know what. How do they tape? An it goes egg? up to season fifteen. Oh fuck! I got a lot left. How do they tape? It an was egg? like Velcro. They did like a Velcro thing. Okay. It was great. It's uh That's genius. I, I wanted to do a thing where it, we, if we all had elite controllers, I wanted to 3D print really long thumbsticks mm-hmm. and I have everyone do a let's play of that. But that's beyond my skill set. Yeah, but Ryan could do it. I Ryan could do say, it. Ryan yeah, could do it in a second. Have people... Or Marcus could do it. Oh, that'd be awesome if you like, and if they got really big, like if they slowly grew in size. So it's like you have to use your hands, <laughs> like <laughs> this. Like GTA, like. It's like the controller's over there, and you're just like. But that's exactly why I watch it to come up with ideas for that kind of stuff. Just looking for like interesting, clever uh, punishments and things to do to people. Uh, also, do you guys watch the finale of Great British Baking Show? No, no. I'm still. I'm on like season two. Oh, the new season. It was. It was a. It's appointment viewing on Netflix. It's like their <laughs> only appointment viewing show. It just ended last Friday. What I'm surprised mean? you guys don't watch it. It only comes out. It, it comes out week to week on Netflix. Really? Yeah, because uh, it's like new episodes in the UK, new episodes right? In the UK. Yeah. Are any of you watching uh, The Good Place? I'm a little bit behind because I only watch it with. <laughs> Divorce is complicated. So that's a show that I watch with Millie, but because I only have Millie every other week. Yeah. It's I have to wait, and then there's other priorities. It's so I'm like three you, episodes you back. Just, you can gotcha. just watch it. Don't tell her. Just like pretend like you haven't. Well, she's not here. I don't see well, her. I'll say this: the little fucker does it to me with Riverdale constantly, see? but I <laughs> I won't do it because I don't like to watch stuff twice. We and saw I'm not some good at lying. People from so. Riverdale at San Diego Comic Con, and I think that's the, that's the first time I've ever seen you starstruck <laughs> in a way, like excited to meet or see I just, people. I watched the show, and I'm a fan of of what they do, so it was nice to see them. Yeah, yeah, and Are definitely you? not take photos of them. Are you watching Watchmen on HBO? Nah, not yet. Anybody? I mean, we're gonna start this week. It's so good. Yeah, the, Blaine the, was talking about it. The episode the that came out yesterday, the third episode, was so good. I have TV paralysis right now, where it's just like there's so there's so much stuff to watch. I don't know what any of it. I don't know what to watch. You so you watch Love Island stuff. and Cutthroat Kitchen, a show that hasn't been. So nice. uh, Love years. Island, no, because I've seen all that. But yeah, I'm watching, but Cutthroat Kitchen. It's low pressure, and then if I you know lose my attention span or whatever, it doesn't matter. It's hard to commit. You can do other also sports, at the same time. basketball season. So you know, I got a couple hours of that a night. Mm-hmm. With all with all this new stuff that's come out, I've just started watching Midsummer Murders, which is a British countryside crime show from the nineties. <gasps> is it like Rosemary and Time? <laughs> like kind of. It's like Columbo, but in the English country. Is it good? <laughs> no, it's wicked. Is it on Netflix? No, I'm watching it on BritBox. Uh, I'll watch it. Based on, on the crime novel series by author Carolyn Graham, <laughs> Midsummer so Murders odd. follows the efforts of Detective Chief Inspector John <laughs> Barnaby to solve crimes that occur in the wealthy, isolated English 
County of Midsummer, a picturesque and peaceful place on the outside, but one filled with amoral and snobbish eccentrics is with he, all kinds of vices. Is he kind of like an old gray-haired dude? The Chief Inspector no. Barnaby is the younger cousin <laughs> of DCI Tom Barnaby, who retired in 2011. Oh, he, he quit? John Nettles stopped? I guess. Oh, man. His right-hand man is Detective Sergeant <laughs> Jamie Winter, who is a young, keen, and smart as a whip. Midsummer Murders is the UK's longest-running contemporary detective drama, <laughs> having aired since 1997. Yeah, it's, it, it. it's shot in my town a lot. Like, I'll just see the pubs that I go to in the background. Okay. A lot of murder Here. in your pubs. Yeah. Question for you, Jeff. Yeah, yeah. This is, what did I say? Uh, the UK's longest-running contemporary detective drama. Been on the air since 1997. Looks like... I can't. I can't tell you. What it looks like they have twenty seasons so far. Maybe how many episodes are <laughs> exist for this show? For twenty seasons? For since nineteen ninety seven. Oh gosh, twenty seasons. Of the they do one to three episodes a season typically in England. <clears throat> uh, I'm gonna guess one hundred twenty episodes. Nailed it <laughs> on the head. <laughs> it's one hundred twenty episodes. <laughs> Jesus Christ. They do six episode seasons. Uh, so unless there's a Christmas special, yeah, that's easy. Uh, and they're like two hours each. Well, like. Maybe like an hour. Hour, hour, uh, like Rosemary Times around hour and a half, hour and forty. Yeah, which by the way, though. if it's any, if it's half as good as Rosemary Time, I'll watch it. I've seen oh, that yeah, entire show on, three times all the way through. You should go miss some murders. The theme tune is played on a theremin. That's how cool it is. That was pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> I like theremins. I like how that's the determining factor. That's how cool it is. Oh, somebody uh, says uh, Jonathan uh, Creek is a good one too. Oh yeah, with Alan Davis. I got the raisins. <laughs> I like that. Was that theremin? It's theremin. Yeah, it's theremin. <laughs> oh, I was like, is this a new segment? <laughs> it's like theremins, because of like shitty sci-fi movies in the 50s and 60s, I always associate them with like aliens or horror now. It's like, like that, that instrument was co-opted by a genre of film. And now it's like, you can't use that for anything other than <laughs> aliens or horror movies. Or like not even good horror movies, like B, campy B horror movies. Yeah, the, uh, the Midsummer Murders I watched last night had... Uh, what's that old maester's name in Game of Thrones? Pycelle had him in it, mm. except he was he was Grand Maester, twenty five years <laughs> younger, and he's somehow looked the same. <laughs> there's some people uh, who get like get old and then stay old. Yeah, and like Maggie like, Smith, like, Patrick been old, and like Paul Rudd is the opposite, who has looked the same for the last like twenty five like years. He's fifty years old, and That's he's insane. he's the same age as he was in Clueless. It's yeah. fucking bizarre. <clears throat> he hasn't aged at all. You should, you should watch that Living With Yourself show. That's I want to. I like him. I heard good. It's such he, an interesting premise. It's also like, I think each episode's only like 30 minutes long, if I remember 20, right. 20, 22, 24 ish. Yeah. He was on yeah. Howard Stern and uh, talking about it, and it, it sounded really good. Was I, was it you guys I was telling that Howard Stern story that he told about being on Friends recently? Mm, no. No. He was telling the story. He, I didn't remember this because I didn't watch that shitty show, but <laughs> he was on the last season of Friends. I guess he was Phoebe's, Phoebe's boyfriend or something. And some then shit. husband. Well, yeah. he was in Spoiler. series nine as well. Uh, he was uh, the last season or two yeah, of Mike. Yeah, whatever. Do you remember how they met? Because uh, Joey said that he found a dude called Mike. To so set he up walked with into Central Phoebe. Park and said, Mike! And then Paul Rudd. Paul Rudd turned around. All right. Mm -hmm. Well, um,. Anyway, he told a story about how he was so fucking excited to be on the show because, you know, these people are making a million dollars an episode and they're like the biggest stars on TV and it was awesome. And he was kind of a plucky young dude getting his start. But he's also Paul Rudd and he's uh, funny. And uh, so he said he was he was filming one of the last episodes and he walked in and he said everybody in the room was like sad and sharing stories. And he said Jennifer Aniston and the head writer of the show were like in an embrace, hugging and crying about how they were going to miss each other. And he said he walked up and he just joined the hug and he said, it's been quite a ride, guys, which is <laughs> fucking funny. <laughs> And he goes, talk about misreading a room. Oh, my God. Oh, no. <laughs> he goes, that one went over really badly. Oh I can't imagine doing that. I would have done it in a heartbeat. <laughs> Absolutely. Especially for Paul Rudd. the fucking thing ever. What's Quite he in a that, ride. In that Super Nintendo commercial? Yeah. Yeah. He's really young in that one. Yeah. Was Clueless his first acting thing? Like the I don't know. mainstream? I least? don't know. It's the first thing I remember seeing him in. Yeah. Um, He's supposed to be, what, like 20? In that movie? He is her college brother, <laughs> stepbrother. Stepbrother, yeah. So he's probably like 19 to 22. Yeah. Somewhere around there. God, he's got a fucking long ass IMDb. Yeah, well, he um, works a lot. He also seems like a really genuinely nice guy. Yeah. Like, cool guy. He did some things before that. Um, Clueless is probably the first big thing. Yeah. He was in a TV show called Wild Oats, which I don't remember. Mm-mm. 
uh, credited as Paul Stephen Rudd in 1994, mm. before Clueless. What's the premise of Wild Oats? Let's let's find, let's find out. Two I would like to know. Horses and also network and link out. <laughs> and format like genre. It's a uh, short-lived four-week comedy. Okay, it's <laughs> guess, comedy it's about a, two horses. Someone Wild Oats. Uh, uh, about Jack Slayton and Brian Grant, two twenty-somethings living together in Chicago. Shelley Thomas was Jack's girl, ex-girlfriend who was what? This isn't a summary. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna okay. I'll read this. Two I'm just mad at this now. Crazy horses it's, it's are in summary. love. Short-lived comedy about Jack Slayton and Brian Grant, two twenty-somethings living together in Chicago. Shelley Thomas was Jack's ex-girlfriend who was being dated by Brian. The rest of the cast were also twenty-somethings who only had sex on the brain. That's we should watch that that's, show that's and somewhere on IMDb. We should watch it and resurrect it and become like Wild Oats stands and talk about <laughs> it all the time. And have like Wild Oats fan fests. Be Oties. Oties, we're odors. <laughs> um, yeah. Hey Gavin, you and I uh, you and I did something that we don't ever do. But sex? We no, something we don't out. ever do. Oh. We hung out. We spent time together. Outside of work. Outside of work. We hung out this weekend. It was great. Saturday night, Gavin and I hung out. It was awesome. What'd you guys it's do? A we went over to Jeremy and Kat's house, and we had board game night with me, Millie, Jeremy, Kat, Gavin, and Meg. Played some Very coup. Nice. We played some coup, but that was more of a primer for Betrayal at the House on the Hill, which was love that game. So fun. Yeah, I think we did one. I think Achievement Hunter's done a few videos now, but that game <laughs> is so much fun. Yeah, it's great. It's completely different every time. It's also really fun to play games like that and have it not be content. To play it just for fun and not have to worry about making videos out of it. Yeah, I mean, I did finish and think that would have been better than some of the videos. We've I, that's made the that. that's the problem. But too. it was like still when you, fine when you like... just let yourself have fun and just play it. That last game where I just fucking destroyed you guys for an hour <laughs> would have been the best video. <laughs> oh, that game's fucking awesome. Have you ever played that game, Gus? I think so, but it's I can't. like a it's like you you're investigating a four people investigate a haunted house and then the house you build the house as you go yeah, yeah you and then it's like yeah. which side to go in and then it builds another room yeah on and then top one of, of you it. becomes a bastard and tries to kill everyone and there's like fifty different you, like one of you gets haunted at Who some was point haunted? Uh, the first game Meg was and we killed her but Gavin actually took care of it he she, he had to she did he had to I defuse the bomb defu defuse the bomb mm. and the second game I was I was a poltergeist and I just decimated them uh, but slowly and and mean. Um, but yeah, and there's like, so like at the haunting, it's like a dice roll kind of thing, and there's 50 different hauntings. So it's never even close to the same game. It's really cool. It's neat. I'm surprised you've never seen it or played it, Gus. I may have at some point. I bet you have. I haven't, I haven't played Have you guys ever played uh, Mysterium? Mm -mm. I've heard of that. Mysterium's uh, one of my new favorite games. <coughs> Miles actually introduced it to me. Um, basically, you play as a bunch of clairvoyants, and you're trying to solve your own murder cases in this old house. Mm-hmm. And in the house, there's a ghost who's giving you premonition cards to try to help you guess which person, place, and thing was the uh, murder case that you're trying to solve. And each person has a different one. You're trying to help each other. And then ultimately, when you get to the end, the ghost then choose one of the murder cases to be the one that they died in and has to essentially make the whole team guess which murder was theirs just through using these premonition cards. So it's using, like, these random images to indicate, like, oh... There's a man with a mustache on this card, and one of the killers has a mustache, so maybe that's the person that they're trying to get me to choose. It's really fun. The so ghost the, can't talk or anything. I just have the, does the ghost show, have, like, random premonition cards? or like? You, yeah, so you always draw seven, so you always okay. have seven in your hands, and that's so what you, have, you that's what you, that's like you work with what you got. It gets really difficult. Like, you have items in the game that could help you burn your hand if you want and stuff, and, like, you could give people, I think, up to three or four premonition cards each, so you, you always have seven in your hand, so you could draw more. But it's really, I love those like association games so much, whether it's word association or like trying to get something like visually. Those are the most fun to me. We should play that for Let's Roll. You should come on and do a Let's Roll and show them the game. I would love to. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you have to talk to Trevor. He's the one that schedules all that. But mm. uh, I, I, I don't know if he likes me or not. <sighs> Have your bubby put in a good word. <laughs> yeah, that's a good call. Yeah. my bubby for permission. Now. If you are going to go on Let's Roll, make sure you don't use the dartboard. For actual darts, because Larry gets mad. <laughs> is that is that a thing? What? Yeah. There's like is there a just, dartboard? Is it a dartboard up? And I always just throw a few darts at every time I go in there. And Larry, somebody just says like, it's like it... reverse clue. <clears throat> oh, interesting. Um, I don't know if I've ever heard that reference before for it. But uh, is Larry sitting by the dartboard when you're throwing darts at him? Because maybe no. that's why he doesn't like it. No, I just I'm, I'm a terrible shot, so I just miss and hit the wall, and it's a 
It's like a set. <laughs> Did, you ever play, tiny holes in it. Did you ever play darts? I feel like that's a very like British pub thing. Like yeah, and you're still terrible at it. Yeah, I mean, how how do you get good at darts unless you just play darts all the time? Well, that's why I, I was played. asking. Did you play darts a lot when you? I've went... played the occasional game of darts. I'm not just like doing game after game though. Did you play darts? We used to play darts, right? We used to play darts. We had a dart board in the um, you, like scored in the it and not garage. a double and all that. Yeah. yeah, we got into it for a while. We, yeah, we got into it for we got a, oddly a few into months. it. Yeah. yeah, I don't know why. Why do we do that? Man, I think uh, if I'm if I uh, Gus, our we've had such a long journey together. I want to say it's been quite a ride. I was for quite a ride. <laughs> I want to say we were at Ginger Man one time, and That's we right. were watching people play, yeah. and we started playing, and it was fun because it was like sports, but you didn't have to be athletic, and we kind of <laughs> latched onto it, and yeah. then we were into it. I for think a you're bit. right. Yeah, yeah. We did go I think it was Gin- because of Ginger. Man. We used to go to Ginger Man every now and then. Every once in a while, I was never crazy about that place, but um, big beer selection. They had a ton of beer. Yeah. yeah. Do you guys ever go to Vigilante? I've been there a couple times. I don't know what that is. It's a uh, board game bar. Restaurant uh, place here in Austin. It's not too far from here. It's like up at Airport in Lamar. Yeah, it's really cool. Do you think if you oh. sat on the roof of Stage Five and there was a dart ball on the floor, you could drop a dart into the bullseye? Absolutely. Yeah, one hundred percent. It might be easier. Would it be easier? I think so. You should try it. Dropping. Gravity is helping you. It's yeah. not fighting you. Why don't we have a f- scissor lift somewhere? Yeah. Because this is easier than that. <laughs> That's great form, Barbara. <laughs> <laughs> is that your double pop? <laughs> I was trying to do it for the camera. I, I was also imitating Gavin. I have a video of you from probably six years ago where you're trying to throw a dart with your left hand instead of your right. And did I play dots with you at some point? Yeah. Oh, shit. It was, I mean, it was one of those times we went to 6th Street and did. Oh, uh, yeah. And it was a lot of Good things we days. don't remember. But <laughs> I remember it was like you, <laughs> I kept filming it because it just looked so messed up. I mean, it, it's it's funny watching someone throw with their wrong hand, but throwing a dart is like, spe- it's special. Yeah. It's, it's so hard to get it anywhere near where you want to. It's so funny how your uh, life and priorities can change. Like you mentioned Vigilante, which is a bar that I've never heard of. I guess it's not a bar. I would say Do it's more like... Do they sell alcohol? Yes. Yeah, but they so sell the food. It's, I'd say it's more like a, more rest- a restaurant. Kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Just, there was a time in my life when I, I had been to every bar in Austin, and I would I would know about every bar before they like opened, you know? Mm-hmm. And I can't remember the last time I went to a bar. We, we, that was one of our early projects that never went off the ground. We, you know... We did drunk game. We did ugly internet first, and we did drunk gamers, and and we had a bunch of in but, in process. Right. Like we had a bunch of side websites that we were well, working on, and one of them was Austin <coughs> Drinkers. Austin Drinkers. It's interesting. We don't ever think about this, or we don't ever talk about this, but Rooster Teeth wasn't our only project. Right. Like we had a bunch of uh, other productions and ideas and schemes that we had going on in tandem with Rooster Teeth. And all that happened was Rooster Teeth took off before the other ones. And so we started to sunset those to pay more attention to right, Rooster Teeth. We didn't Teeth have time for any of that. Because we didn't stuff. have time. We but even did a photo shoot for Price Puncher, remember? We did. We had Price Puncher. We had Drunk <laughs> Army. We had Woot Wear. We had a bunch of other stuff that we were doing. I forgot about Austin Drinkers, but that was a big one. Yeah, was we were. I remember we, we, we remember were going to map out like... The cheapest places to get drinks any day of the week at any time. Like map all yes. the happy hours for every bar. Yeah. And so you could just go look and be like, I've only got ten dollars. What's the most I can drink for ten dollars like, right now? At four PM on a Wednesday, where's the cheapest drink I can buy in Austin? <laughs> and we were gonna we were gonna map it exhaustively. <laughs> we and we went to we went to a lot we went of to like a bunch of places. Were you gonna make it an app bars. or a website? There were no uh, apps back then. Was <laughs> app. oh, oh, right. I'm thinking of the wrong year. But it would make a great app now. It would yeah. make a great app now. So for sure. you should you should get back on that. We, yeah, that's the only <laughs> time. My mom played snakes. <laughs> we would go to like weird bars. We, I misheard the year. That's you guys the were only time about. I ever went to that um, Holiday Inn bar, like right there at Riverside. That's I think about that Holiday Inn, the, the round one. I think about that one. I think about that night every time I drive by there. <laughs> it's you and me, and I think Sarah. It was. Yeah. yeah. Dude, I just. That's weird. I had to make sure that was my first wife's name. Yeah, you and me and Sarah, I think, were just sitting at that bar thinking, this is the worst place on earth. We can't yeah. ever come back here. Yeah. <laughs> this episode of the Receipt Podcast is brought to you by Hims. So Mark Zuckerberg is 35 years old, and maybe you don't care about that, but here's something you probably do care about. 66% of men already start to lose their hair by the time they're 35. You see? Uh, even worse, it's often too late by the time you notice it. With hair loss, the best thing to do is to stop it while you still can. Let 4 help, a one-stop shop for hair loss, skin care, and sexual wellness for men. 
I look at my hair every day, I'm sure just like you do, and you know that feeling when you look in the mirror and you notice something different? Hate that, but I really like that there's something that could help me feel better about keeping my own hair. Thanks to science, baldness can be optional. Hims uses licensed physicians and FDA-approved products to treat hair loss, letting guys feel like the best version of themselves. For Hims saves you hours by connecting you with real doctors online, giving you prescription solutions that are backed by science. All you have to do is answer a few quick questions, one of their doctors will review, and if they determine it's right for you, they can prescribe hair loss medication that is then shipped directly to your doorstep. Order now, our listeners can get started with the Hims Complete Hair Kit for just $5 today, right now while supplies last and subject to doctor approval. You can see the website for full details and safety information. This could cost hundreds if you went to the doctor or a pharmacy somewhere else. Go to 4 slash rooster. That's F-O-R-H-I-M-S dot com slash rooster. 4 com slash rooster. Thanks, Hims, for sponsoring this episode of the Rooster Podcast. Uh, oh, man. Yeah, then uh, Price Puncher was... Uh, is we were going to try to make money off of affiliate links. Affiliates and deals, yeah. yeah and we like had a whole... Find the cheapest, the cheapest ways to buy video games online. And it was like, the the mascot was uh, like a, a, a luchador named Price Punch. No, El, uh, it was Price Puncher, and his sidekick was El Cheapo. El Cheapo, which was Jason. <laughs> and, uh, and they were fighting against God high was, prices. Was high prices. <laughs> we repurposed some of that into the old comics we did yeah. for the DVDs. <laughs> Um, that uh, Griffin wrote, but uh, but yeah, Price Puncher was originally gonna be you, and Jason was El Cheapo, and then Dan Godwin had a unitard, and he was, was high price. We were just gonna make money off of like affiliate links, directing people to buy video games online. We were it was ahead, like, ahead of our dumb time. All these weird, stupid little business <laughs> ideas we had, just like constantly churning them out. Yeah, we had a ton of them. Was there one with like a monkey? We were talking about. Show me the monkey. I was telling Eric about show me the monkey. Show me the monkey. Yeah. Yeah, we went to the Capitol. We were filming the Judge Judy thing the other day, and I was like, I don't think I've been to the Capitol since you know we did that show me the monkey thing. Oh yeah. Yet another in the million websites. I remember we still wear because that was after, that was after right? RT or yeah. during RT. Yeah. Got a combat Sarge shirt. Bernie was real happy about that. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> hey, we fo- we focused. We eventually. You know, all those shirts just got thrown away. Yeah. They were under my house or under uh, my ex's yeah. house for a very long time, and uh, I didn't know you still had any. She was like, there. "There's a bunch of shirts under the house still," and I was like, "Oh, those are like 12 years old, and they've been the sitting sh- on the ground in cardboard boxes." I didn't realize you still had any down I, there. I didn't what realize do you mean by either. Under the house. So I I like task rabbited somebody to come throw them away. You didn't but, like get, have a look at them? No. Nah. See what state they're in? Dude, I thought they were state there and they're in the state of like snakes and scorpions and <laughs> all kinds of animals living in there. Gross. So, but think of the quality merchandise that they had <laughs> to keep them one, warm. One of the first pieces, pieces well, let's say the first piece of merch we ever made. It's right Drunk there. Gamers mug. The yeah. Drunk Gamers coffee mug. Oh. There's only about 25 of those in existence. Well, I think we bought 25 or 50. Something like that. Yeah. And there's I think probably about 50. five left. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then we had. Drunk gamer keychains too. Do you remember that? We we, did, we didn't make those. Did somebody we? gave someone them to sent us. them to us? Yeah, I, I still got, have mine somewhere. I've got one. It was like a little like a space, space invader, invader guy. Yeah. Yeah. When I was in um, England just now, well, not just now, but the last time I was there was a few months ago. I found the RVB hoodie that I bought, but I've never wore it. It's like a brand new original RVB hoodie. Why didn't you wear it? Just don't, I just what? never wore it. Was it a black it? hoodie with the yeah with the red R, R the, yeah yeah. But it's like pristine. It was the very first hoodie. Was it? A, it was a pullover, right? Or was it a zip up? I think it was a zip. That's the first ones were. Pull- first ones were pullover. Oh, pull- pull- so yeah. right. I can I can look at it. The original yeah. one I have is a zip, unless that's the second iteration. Of that was the second, second iteration. iteration. Noted. Still got an original caboose, holding up. <laughs> it was like one of you were wearing that shirt, and when you had like all the clone photos of you. Yeah. Was that that shirt? Mm-hmm. Probably a long time ago. God, you looked so different back then. I think in those pictures sometimes about how you kind of look like you had longer hair and you were a lot skinnier and lankier. Damn, she called you fat. Damn. Yeah. Thanks. Gavin's gained a lot of weight over the years. <laughs> I called him fat today and he got mad about it. <laughs> Why did you call him fat? I, I, he, I, I don't know. <laughs> Gavin never eats candy or soda or anything. He's like the healthiest motherfucker. And he just, out of the blue, I was <laughs> in Achievement tricky. Hunter helping film. Um, fuck it, we were filming some H music <laughs> stuff. I don't know why that's a secret. Oh, that's a wicked Quicksilver shirt. And uh, <laughs> and uh, Gavin just announced to the room. He says, "He goes, I'm gonna get a donut." <laughs> and everybody looked at him like, "What the fuck?" And I think I called you fatty, and you go, oh, "I'm not fat. You're fat." That is what I said. <laughs> you you seem so wounded. No, you. Did oh, they get donuts it? for you guys this morning? No, nah, Michael brought them. In. Oh, very nice. Michael and Lindsay uh, I, feed everybody breakfast like probably twice a week. I used to every now and then bring donuts in mm-hmm. to our office. 
I'm in the wrong department. But only one person would ever say thank you. Who was it? <laughs> Me. Because I so appreciate I like, it. I was like, fuck this. I'm not doing this anymore. Aw. But you, she was saying thanks. She was polite. Yeah, nobody else was. I, I mean, think like, it's... Dozens of donuts and kolaches and shit. What if I got more people to say thank you? Would you do it again? <laughs> Over. <laughs> I'm a very petty man, Barbara. Where would you get donuts and kolaches uh, from? SNH. SNH? Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's so good. We call it shithead. <laughs> shithead donuts. <laughs> Love that place. It's, Dude, it's we, really good. It's great. No, I got it's, yeah. it's the only place I go to get kolaches. They make and donuts. my favorite kolaches in Austin, I think. Yeah, I love it. It's like that soft, uh, soft dough. Mm -hmm. A lot of places use it uh, too, like firm dough. Yeah, mm -hmm. I don't like. There's like that place, uh, batch, the batch. Like they're like. Oh yeah. It's a, like it's interesting once, but when you want a kolache, you just want like cheap how bread long, and hot dogs. How long has that place and, been there? I just batch noticed is, it. It's been there a year and a half. Okay, probably. I just noticed yeah, it like still last new. month. Yeah. Still new. Um, they have a brisket. Uh, like a, they do like curlin barbecue brisket kolaches with pickles. They're pretty good But it's like after you eat it, you're like this is good, but it's not a kolache. Yeah. It's not what I it's, want, you know It's not vegan. Can't eat it anyway. All right, you're vegan now. <laughs> How's that going? Still vegan. Still huh? going. What? I remember how much fun you made of me when I went vegan way back in the day I think it lasted I think longer you than you did. You begged me. You were like, I'm moving to Puerto Rico and I'm gonna eat at all my favorite restaurants it's in the last week that I'm were, in town. You was a pain in the ass. And you're gonna ruin and it you were, because you're you gonna be vegan and you're, I, you're the, I don't wanna go to dinner with anybody else and I'm gonna have to sit and you're gonna watch it's me. It's because I knew it wasn't weird. gonna last with you. So you were just you, gonna be in a huge pain in the ass for no reason. And you were like, so could you just not be vegan for one fucking week so that I can eat <laughs> a hot hamburger so or wherever. <laughs> and that, so I stopped being vegan for you. You and gotta go by Gus rules. And then that was it. You, I, I prevented you from ever doing it I know, I just had bacon again, and I was like, oh, good. Are you and Esther doing it together? Yeah. I, I think what happened is, you wanted to go vegan, and you knew people would make fun of you, so you came up with this whole idea of like, no, oh, I made I'm fun just gonna of, try it out. I made fun of myself when I started. Nothing to make fun of. It's awesome. Uh, are you feeling better? I mean, that's... Nah. So why... Why are you doing it still? It's like, okay, so here's the problem. I know I'm gonna stop, Are right? Are you too competitive? And, and I'm competitive with myself. I'm gonna stop and I'm gonna eat something. Whatever, meat or cheese or whatever. And then I'm gonna be like, yeah, I had a, like, whatever, a three week long streak. I'm gonna see if I can go longer than that. Mm -hmm. it's, and that's just what it's gonna be. It's like, eventually I'll eat something and then I'll just try to beat the streak. So I'm just fucking myself over by going longer. How I'm, long have you gone? Two and a half weeks. Okay, I went two months. See if you can beat that. Oh well. What Are made you, you stop? Oh, because of Gus. I had to, <laughs> did you, did you, do you want to read yeah, one? I, 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 no, no, I Gus and Casino it. El Camino made me stop. <laughs> what made you start? What, two months before I stopped? Like what, what made, what you made start? me start? <laughs> yeah. Oh. Uh, did I say that weird? No. no. I thought okay, I, I heard you. you wrong. I heard I thought you said what made you start. Uh, or when did you start? That's what you said. <laughs> What's happening here? I've had a very long day. I've had a very, very long day. I've had one of those days where you're like, <sighs> yeah. Um, really good. I think I just wanted to be healthier and didn't want to hurt animals and stuff, and you know, just like wanted to try it and see if I felt better. Yeah. And I did at the time. I remember lose weight and stuff. Uh, I don't think I gave a shit about that back then. I wasn't. I was about what yeah, I weigh now. I, I don't think it's necessarily like something you automatically lose weight doing anyway. Yeah. You end up offsetting with a lot of carbs. <clears throat> I've done a lot oh, of yeah. vegan. I've done a lot of vegan people who don't eat. Well, right. Yeah, because it's like you're trying to compensate for the things you can't have mm -hmm. by eating just everything. Yeah, else. I, I, I don't think I've lost a single pound. Like, like Chris <laughs> with his fucking pasta pass. Oh yeah, is that him over there? No, no it's, no, blank. it's blank. 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 And Dutch. So we we played a little bit of GTA today. We did for a thing for a thing that actually wasn't a video. But I feel like the vi it was really good because it wasn't a video. Once again, it was like it was like <laughs> we, last night or Saturday night when played we played GTA. board games. Yeah, we just we played a game of offense defense today, and it was the most fun we've all had playing <laughs> GTA in a really long time. It's a shame it won't come out. And we're all sitting there talking about how like this could have been a video. <laughs> Are you allowed to say what it's for? Uh, I guess we probably shouldn't. Okay. All right. Well, yeah. I mean, it's fun. I I played. I've been playing a lot of uh, the Outer Worlds. We talked about that. Yeah. Last week. God, I did something awful in that last night. I got you awful. Do? Well, there was a <laughs> there's a little companion quest. You pick people up who sit on your ship throughout the game, and I uh, just got this woman who was like, "Oh, can we go and see my parents?" Because you gain access to this really rich place. I've played it. Yeah. So I went in there and I just murdered them right in front of her, just to see if there was any dialogue for that. And there is, and she gets really mad and she leaves. <laughs> I just 
like shot her did, mom in the head. Did and you I, keep playing or did you reload a save? I, I reloaded and I like shot her dad with a flamethrower and he just melted at her feet. And I was like, oh What's wrong with you? What's well, this escapism, isn't it? It's not, it's not like what you do in real life. It's like you could just go ape shit if you want. Especially when your flamethrower gets stolen. That's true. It's very difficult. Oh, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I like that game. I need to get back to it. I've been playing Call of Duty. It's, it, it, I really liked. Uh, I'm still playing it. I really like the Outer Worlds, but I had a thing where, like I told you last week, like I got to a point where I was like, I'm gonna put it down and I'm gonna come back to it. Mm -hmm. It was really hard to pick it up again and go back to it. But then I picked it up and like I was like, Fallout. This is really fun. <laughs> like I'm instantly like, I, I want to keep playing. I put hours and hours into it. I d I discovered something in the last week about myself that I, I'm fascinated by, which is I thought I didn't like video games anymore. I thought I was kind of done with it because it's like a work thing and it's not a way to relax at home anymore. <laughs> Apparently, I do like video games. I just was so fucking stuck on Gems of War that it. Oh, so now it's hundred percent. After I hundred percent of Gems of War and I moved on, I, I like instantly <laughs> found a desire to play video games again. So Gems of War has been holding me back for how long? How many years? Five years. God damn. Yeah, I've been playing it for almost five years. Uh, the four years and ten months. Andrew Pannon was telling me about this site where it tracks like the longest gaps between achievements in yeah. games. And apparently I could get pretty high on the leaderboard if I get another achievement in like Tomb Raider Anniversary. Because it'll be like a 12 or 13 year gap between Man, I, wa I wanted to like that game when it came out. I just couldn't get into it. It... Oh, that's your completed thing. Oh, fuck yeah, look at that! That's not, e that's not easy to do. Do you know how many people, like what percentage of players... I know. That? Uh, Andrew looked it up for me. I don't know how he knows, but he said less than 50 <coughs> people in the world have 100% of that game. That's so, uh, less people that have been on top of Everest. Yeah. So I'm one of about 50 people that have sunk four or 500 hours into that. And probably way more than that. Maybe a thousand hours into that game. That's I just realized I missed a... There's like seasonal stuff you can look at in the Master Chief collection. Like some of the maps have stuff that happens mm -hmm. on certain days. I just realized I missed the Halloween one. Change your system clock. Yeah, I don't want to do that. That sounds like effort. It is. Yeah. Only 536 people have been uh, in space. So less people. How many? Five hundred thirty-six. That's loads. That's a lot. That's a lot. Uh, three. More people, people have been in space than have seventy achievements in Gems of War. Right. <laughs> Ten <laughs> times as many people. So what you did in Gems of War is way more commendable than going to space. Thank you very much. Thank you. That's, thank you. That's thank you. Give you the, the and proper. probably took just as much training. In like too. three months, they'll update it again, and I don't have to. I'll have to dive back in. What's gonna happen is I'm gonna fuck myself because, Go on. huh? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, because I'm not gonna play it for the next three months, and so I won't be building up whatever mechanic or whatever form of loot that I'm gonna need to get the next achievement. So I'll be like way behind the curve when they Can launch the achievements. No, no, they they let you spend money, but Pay not in win. any useful way. Oh, okay. Have you sp you have spent money on that, right? Oh, hundreds and <laughs> maybe uh, maybe a hundreds and hundreds and hundreds. Come of on now. Yeah. I don't want to say the thousand word, but I don't know. It's been five years. But you don't know. <laughs> but if I don't it's know. providing you entertainment. Yeah. But, and apparently it was locking me out of enjoying all other video games. I've had so much fun playing games since I finished that game. <laughs> Call of Duty multiplayer is awesome. I had no idea. I, I, I haven't played a Call of Duty game in several years. It's good. The new one, Modern Warfare. I haven't touched the campaign, which I hear is pretty good, but just the multiplayer. Drop-in, drop-out's great. Have you played Smite any time recently? Mm -mm, it's been a while. I know you used to for a while. They just released <coughs> the Ruby skins. Oh, that's out? I, they're either about to or just did. I know they had a, like an announcement video about it last week. I'm looking. That is so cool. Yeah, that's uh, yeah. So each they're they're not actual characters in the game. They're just skins on existing characters. But they have the whole like voice packs and stuff that we recorded. I wish we had done through the history of the company a better job of capturing every time a Rooster Teeth property was mentioned in a video game mm. because it adds up. Yeah. And it's I I had a count for a while <clears throat> and it was like 22 or 23 video games that we'd been in as Easter eggs or there was like a, a reference or a whatever. And I, I, I lost that. And I, don't, and I would love to see it. Like We used to make videos about them. Yeah. What was the game that you and Jack were in again? Red, Red Dead? Red Dead Redemption. Okay. Yeah, the new one. Comes out on PC um, tomorrow. But there are like all kinds of little ways. Like, do you, What was that yeah, remember, snowboarding game? SSX? SSX, <laughs> oh, where there's yeah. a character Griff Simmons. Yeah, and Tricky. Tricky, SSX I, Tricky. I think it was, yeah. Yeah. Uh, the, the one that I was most excited about was the, is it a spider achievement in uh, Gears, of, Gears War. of War? The first Gears of War. Um, the, um, a really cool one we had a couple years ago, which is another new game that's out, the new Plants vs. Zombies Garden Warfare, which is really fun. I need to get back to it. The first one came out, there was an Achievement Hunter 
uh, Easter egg. It was just like a flyer that was on like like gas stations next to other flyers about stuff. It was like Chivo Hunters, and it was our logo. And then the second game came out, and we looked for the Easter egg, and there wasn't. We couldn't find one in there. And so in a video of us playing the game, we joked around about how the guy or lady that put us in the video game must have gotten fired for it. And then when the <laughs> DLC for the game came out, he put another Easter egg in, or he or she put another Easter egg in, and said, nope, still work here. <laughs> <laughs> so the fact that they responded to our Easter egg with another Easter egg, that was awesome. That's fine. That the really the cool. Hitman ones were good, because they did because it was episodic. Twice? Yeah, the episodic one meant that we, were, we made a reference in... In a game, and then in the same game, there was a reference to that. Yeah. And then in Hitman 2, they don't talk about the puddle pile. They talk about us talking, talking about, puddle about the puddle pile, which is even deeper. They talk about how, like, how, how, like, yeah. we're psychos for watching security cam footage of people getting electrocuted <laughs> and laughing at it. Have and you, they just owned up to it. Have you guys ever met anybody in the history of doing Red versus Blue and, and Rooster Teeth <clears throat> who thought that Microsoft made a video game based off Red versus Blue? Ooh. But how be, would it be? Like they made Halo based off Red versus Blue. Like they thought. I don't. Think I don't. So. I doubt there's a person like this, but I. I wonder. I don't think so. I do remember being real. Like the one that we had for a little while when Griffball got popular was people would come up to our booth at Comic Con or wherever we were and go like, because we had a Griffball banner, and they go, "Oh, Griffball, I love that." What's Red versus Blue? And yeah. Like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> From the makers of Griffball, Red versus Blue. <laughs> <laughs> There's always, some, always something to promote. Always, always something new. Some. Yeah. Someone in the chat said, holy shit, I used to pick that Griff Simmons character all the time, even before I knew what RT was. I'm going to assume that was us. Yeah, we never got official confirmation. We never got official confirmation. They spelled Griff wrong, but... Every, everyone does. It was like does. season two of RVB. A lot of that stuff was happening back then. Yeah. There's probably a fan three. involved in the naming yeah. of the characters. It's, a pretty, it's pretty, pretty overt. You know? Yeah, Griff and Simmons. I mean, come on. I saw, I saw the dumbest product today. Like, <clears throat> it really makes me wonder what we as a society have become uh -oh. and what we're doing with our lives. <laughs> it's a, it was a mechanical spoon that you can attach to the side of a pot so it'll stir whatever you're cooking so you don't have to do it. <laughs> it's just like a little arm with a spoon that goes around in a circle like this so you can do something else and you don't have to stir your food. You're straight next to it on Twitter. What's that? You're just right next to it on oh, Twitter. Oh, right, yeah. <laughs> That's like one of the bullshit inventions that Billy's dad and Gremlins would have made. He'd be yeah. going around the country trying to sell. <laughs> it's like the smokeless ashtray and the cell. <laughs> stir me. Oh, wow. It's what's called stir me? Stir me. Stir me. A whole bunch of them. <laughs> Is it also a temperature gauge? Yeah. That's pretty cool. No, it's not. <laughs> 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 the uh, the stir automatic automatic stove top stir frees you from constant stirring in the kitchen. Self adjusting to any size <laughs> pot. Stirring. There it is. What in the world? Rechargeable long battery life and quiet operation provides stirring. a perfect extra hand in the kitchen. <laughs> I saw it. I was like, just stir your fucking pot. Yeah. I mean, why don't you buy one? Nothing involves that much. Stirring. Buy one and test it out. Eric, buy us one. <sighs> <laughs> That's the enthusiasm I like. <laughs> it's like sixty bucks. What? Just stir. <laughs> it does it at least come with its own batteries. Is it ba yeah, how, yeah. What, what kind of it's batteries a, does it use? I don't know. I'll, like, I'll, like if you want, I'll get one. Thing. I'll get uh, one and we'll test it. Thank you. I remember it says like, in, if wait. you watch the commercial, it says that like one charge lasts twelve hours of stirring. It's like what? <laughs> I think that's a joke in a in a sitcom, isn't it? And someone made a real one. Is it? It sounds like you said. It sounds like something out of Gremlins, like a <gasps> fucking shitty invention. It sounds something from Red Dwarf. There's actually more than one kind on the market. There's more, more than, than one kind. kind? It's so a competitive industry. There's like a lot. There's a lot. I feel like there's a. I mean, a growing industry is just people's laziness. You can make so many products based off just that fact. People right. just are lazy. It's like you're doing right. something and you're like, I don't want to do this. I need both hands for my phone. <laughs> sure, What's surely. the last time you stirred for more than like five minutes? Right. Exactly. It's like stir the pasta. Speaking of cool, no, lazy, don't. lazy inventions, I saw the g yard cutting Roomba in the wild for the first time the other day. Oh, I really? must have watched it for 20 minutes. <laughs> I was going for a bike ride, and then uh, Emily saw it, and she was like, look, that's one of those robot, one of the robot, uh, like, lawn, lawn mowing things. And we just stopped and watched it forever. How'd it work? It worked literally it worked like a charm. It was cutting the shit out of that yard. How and much I don't know what was stopping anybody from driving by and picking it up and just fucking throwing the back of their car <laughs> and driving away with it. Grass go? Huh? Where does the grass go? 
Uh, I don't. I didn't see a grass it's, trap. It's like it, the size of a Roomba, right? Yeah. Uh, it's pretty. It's about three times the size of a Roomba. Oh, okay. Yeah. Never mind. Maybe Let's see. Introducing the Terra T7 robot mower. How much is it? I'm gonna guess. Can you 800. buy it? Can you buy it with like a dummy of a man attached to it so no one <laughs> tries to steal it? Oh, it's not out yet. Available for sale in Germany as a beta program in the U.S. in 2019. Yeah, this one's <laughs> definitely out and for sale. I'm trying to find out how much. I more. think it might be an iRobot one. Yeah, this one. This one's an iRobot. Uh, what if I just put my normal Roomba out in my grass? You could try some clean grass. Have you seen? There's a commercial now for a new. I, I, I'm. I don't understand how this works. There's a commercial for a new uh, Roomba type, type product. Like uh, it's not Roomba. It's a different. It's a different brand. Uh, and on the commercial, they show that like the Roomba goes like this, and theirs is better because it goes just straight lines up and down. Mm -hmm. But then it docks, and there's a trash can attached to the dock, and then it self uh, dumps its own trash. I think some of the. But how does it? Tra how do you dump your trash up? I think some of the iRobots do that. Does it like vacuum? <laughs> so there's a vacuum at the top I of don't the, know. or maybe it just can? goes from suck to blow. It just goes. Yeah. Until it doesn't Maybe. fucking connect completely, or it gets bumped by the cat. <laughs> it, 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 when it docks, it might... Yeah, I don't know. Gravity, I, like, I saw the commercial, and I just, every time I look at it, I think, like, how the fuck? Well, that's why you don't make robot vacuums. I guess that's true. That's not why yet. Don't. If anybody owns one of those, one of the different not iRobot ones, I'd love to know how your how the trash collection works. Is there a little stir mate for, like, a cup of tea? Robo Mo, $600 <laughs> from Lowe's, that's what it is. 600 bucks. Yeah. I guess Robo how much is a lawnmower? Uh, yeah, how much is it? Like a couple hundred bucks? So it's more it's probably more than a lawnmower. Well, Leon Leonidas XIX asks, how I bike in summer in Texas? Like only during dawn and dusk. Well, in the daytime I'm at work. Uh but yeah, yeah, it's uh, like hundred and ten degrees and <clears throat> you just get used to it. It sucks. It sounds terrible. It's good exercise though, you sweat a lot. Yeah. I'd rather bike when it's 110 degrees outside than when it's fifty degrees outside. Can you mean oh, I yeah. bet it'd be awesome when it's fifty? It's oh, so cold. No, it's so cold. So cold. I, I used like... to I used to bike to school with that long hair, and I had bicycles. They just melt over me while I was in the first class of the day. Jesus. Yeah. It's cold, man. It's cold in winter. <laughs> it's colder than fifty. It sounds like. I was just mm -hmm. in London the other week, and it was uh, like cold and raining the entire time we were there. And I was like, "This is, I think, sounds what like on October. brand to expect." Yeah, I've lucked out every other time I've been in London with like really good weather, and this time they just decided to be London about it. It's great. Oh, Eric ordered the stir mate. Thank you, Eric. Thank you, Eric. What size? It'll pot, be pot size, I guess. <laughs> nice. Four twenty. I think they're easily adjustable to any size pot if you we believe can, they're. We propaganda. can use it for extra life. How, no, why do you sound no, so defeated? No, it's, it's our <clears throat> thing. No, I'm okay. Yeah, I'm not defeated. My I I was in the uh, in my yard all day yesterday. My throat's all messed up. Oh, allergies. Allergies. Can you buy a robo mo as well? That's like I can't. I have to get approval. <laughs> I approve it. Here's Just the approval. approval. It's not how that works. <laughs> Could Jeff I approve, approve it? it. Yes, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll just keep saying it. <laughs> we were kind of an <laughs> asshole on an email thread the other day. Were we? <laughs> <laughs> I <don't> remember. <laughs> Eric said. Well, it's pointless. <laughs> Eric sent an email out about scheduling something to release. <laughs> And he just included you and I for visibility, and you and I just kept replying back and forth that we approved it. <laughs> you reply all to it. <laughs> yeah. We're just like, sounds good to me. And then Jeff was like, what Gus said? Like, <laughs> just do it. So we just kept going back. And forth. So everyone who actually I needed to respond that. just was flooded with your replies. Though. Right. Yeah. Great. They got a good seven or eight responses from us. <laughs> that was you. Barbara. You were on that email thread. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I I tend to ignore a lot of emails I get now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, cool. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, just trying to make things happen. You know how it is. Creative director life. <laughs> <laughs> I, love, I love when things like that, like that happen. In all seriousness, though, Eric, I approve that purchase. I just okay. looked at the last response to that email thread, so I guess I just <clears throat> missed all of your back and forth. <laughs> it was pretty, it was I, pretty I gripping. It, it was a lot of the... Uh, the auto suggested replies from... Oh, <laughs> oh <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds good to me! Yeah. Point. <laughs> Did I approve it? Yeah, you said Looking forward good. to it. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> you even responded to someone else who responded with one of those generic responses. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good to me, Gus Cirola. <laughs> I love those. Thumbs up. Yeah, we were talking about that uh, uh, air disaster podcast pilot. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, I, think we're I think we might release it next week. 
I'm excited for it. I am too. Audio only, right? Audio only, yeah. Yeah, I got it slated for the site uh, Monday. Ooh. Next yep. Monday. <clears throat> First member only? Uh, uh, yes. Does it have the part about your dick in it? It does not. Okay. I, I sent Jeff the outtake. I I mean, like, we can leave it in. It's very want. funny, but I was like, but probably not the right tone for the fucking <laughs> show. <laughs> not definitely not the right tone for the show. <laughs> it's like the first five minutes too. You're talking about your dick. I was yeah. talking about my dick. Oh. Nice. What's wrong with that? <laughs> it's, it's, it's it's not that kind of podcast. It's not, it's not the tone of the show. <laughs> This episode of the Receive Podcast is brought to you in part by Clayton, the brother of Satan, and his new Receive show, Good Morning from Hell. In this all-new audio-only comedy podcast, Clayton and his freshly dead man servant, Chris Damaris, interview various res- residents of hell. Guests include historical figures, but biblical figures, mythological figures, action figures, figure skaters, other kind of figures, lots of figures. Uh, find out what happens when you die, what your favorite dead celebrities are up to, and hear about Chris's eternal punishment and torment at the hands of hell's most beloved demon, Clayton. Good Morning from Hell is available on all major podcast providers. Check the link in the episode description or search Good Morning from Hell. Uh, my personal favorite guest so far has been Barbara's character Gambo, who's now best friends with Harrison Ford and <laughs> has a role in an upcoming Indiana Jones film. It's it's a weird show. You got to listen. Trust me. Go search for Good Morning from Hell wherever you get your audio podcasts and subscribe. Blaine has a huge penis. Who wrote this? I'm excited about that one. I like that. Yeah. I like those kind of podcasts. That's like... That's another thing. I don't watch a lot of TV anymore because I listen to a lot of podcasts. Yeah. That's my main form of entertainment <clears throat> now. And um, I mean, I'm really into, uh, oh, we, we've talked about it, but like those crimes, like Crime Junkie, you said you met Ashley Flowers and those mm-hmm. people. Um, and you also like uh, what, Us Weekly? No. No, I like Who Weekly. Who Weekly. Who Weekly. That's the one. Sorry. Yeah. Absolutely. Good form, Bell Thorne. You get like all your women, TV women shows. Women do belong in balloons. I don't yeah, know yeah I understand what any of that means, but it means a lot. I'm balloons. Scarjo Yummy Pop. They, there's just sign offs that people have. It's you're not thing. saying real English words right now. Um, I am saying real stuff. But you're getting all your different type of content <clears throat> through podcasts. Like you get your reality TV through that. Uh huh. You get your, uh, I guess, like true crime. True crime, I'm super into. I still T-shows. listen to Car Talk every week. Listen to the classics. They put a new one every week. Mm. Still awesome. We used to listen to those on the radio all the time. We used to listen to them when we would go drunk sailing because Car Talk would air at 8 a.m. on Saturdays, and that was the only way I could listen to Car Talk was to get up at 8 a.m. on Saturday. It was my favorite radio program, and so that actually, I never talked about it, but that was one of the reasons I was okay getting up at 7 in the morning all hung over with you to go to was that I could listen to Car Talk while we drove around. Did you listen to last week's Good Morning from Hell podcast? I have not listened to it yet. Oh, I think you'd like it. Episode oh, three? To, Episode yeah. three. I've only heard the first two. Oh, you should watch, listen to episode three. That is, are you in that one? I sure, I am. I'm in episode four. Are you? Yeah, I already, I already recorded it. It's not episode four, but uh, I'm in episode something. Yep. Uh, yeah, the one <laughs> episode four just came out today, and it had James and Elise. Oh, I'm not. And in that Eric, one. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Why are you so sad? <laughs> no, I just it's not. I'm not. Don't hey, focus on hey, me. It's my hey, All right, is have, it James and Elise smiling? The more you smile, the more you believe it. Where even is he there? <laughs> He's, He's like in the, in the corner. We're not even talking to Eric. It's just the soundboard. <laughs> That's true. Who knows anymore at this point? Uh, but yeah, I, I think you'd enjoy it. Got Gambo on I, it. I, I know. I, I gotta listen to it. Gus loves Gambo. I love Gambo. Gambo. Anytime I hear your Gambo voice, it makes me laugh. I don't know why. <laughs> it's just so dumb. I just like finding the things that tickle Gus and then doing them repeatedly until everyone else is annoyed by them. That's the best. It's like replying to an email chain over and over ad nauseum <laughs> until people regret ever seeing you Sounds and keeping you in the me, loop. Sounds good to me, Gus. Sounds good to me. Thumbs up. Um, I saw this crazy story. I don't know how often this happens. I saw... Like, maybe it's a sad story? Yeah, it's a sad story. Someone died. Um, <laughs> Did they die in a hilarious way? Hunter dies after deer he was hunting recovers from gunshot and attacks. <laughs> That's revenge. <laughs> okay. Um, Arkansas hunter Thomas Alexander is believed to have been killed by the very deer he was hunting. Yikes. Um, the authorities suspect that after being shot, the animal got up as the man approached and attacked him. Sort of just thump him on the head until he was dead? They have antlers. Yeah, but, I mean, how does that kill you? Do they skew at him through the heart or something? Uh, yeah, they rip you apart with antlers, dude. Those yeah, have you ever seen some of those, like, power. photos of, like, deers where they're just, like, viscera and gore, like, dripping off of, like... <laughs> No. You ever, seen what a, you ever seen what a, a, a car, like a deer will do to a car? Oh, uh, yeah. It's bad. That. Yeah. Those things are I just guess I, I, don't, I don't think of it as equal to like a bull which is, has sharp. Like there's nothing sharp about antlers usually. They're just... The, the just tips? Of them. They're not... They're, they're like rounded the off though. Parts. They're not like ivory. 
Huh? Is ivory sharper? Yeah. An like antler is sharp enough and sturdy enough, and there's enough of them on a deer in a in a. It's like a mace on a fucking eight hundred pound animal that's running at yeah. you as fast as it can go. But it's more of just like a blunt impact, isn't it? Then it like cut your head off. No, I don't think it's gonna saw your head off like, <laughs> it's not like razor blades. Like you would saw have to saw through meat with dental floss and cut through a kitchen or anything. But I think it would still fuck you up. A, de- you, a deer yeah. with dental and floss paleo. across the antlers would be that would, would be, be the lethal animal. It'd be like some hitman thing. <laughs> 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 it comes up behind you and <laughs> it's like a scene in Resident Evil. Uh, yeah. So terrible, terrible tragedy. I used to, I used are you to, sad about I, it? I used to hunt a lot, you know, when mm-hmm. I was younger. And uh, I can't imagine, I've never encountered a situation like that where a deer would get back up. Do you feel like it would be deserved? Um, I, mean, I mean, if you tried to kill you, it, trying so to kill it, yeah. it tried to kill you now. I just, I just, be yeah, better I with your gun. Do you need help with that? <laughs> you good? All right, you're good. Uh, yeah, no, I, I, can't, I can't imagine ever having encountered a situation like that. Like, you know, there's sometimes where you would shoot a deer and, you know, it's maybe not fully dead yet, but not... Not enough, to, not to the point where it's going to get back up. Yeah, mm-hmm. reminds me of uh, living with yourself. <laughs> kind of. Don't want to spoil anything. It's, it's a good show. Yeah. Uh, Check out the first episode. I feel like there's 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 so much going on now. Like there's so many. We've, we I feel like it's something we've always complained about, but it's only getting worse, right? Especially now, like you know, not only Netflix but Apple TV Plus, Disney Plus, the HBO one coming out next year. It's like, it's just so much different shit you can possibly watch. You know what it is? It's cable, but we have to pay for 400 different fucking cables now. Yeah. I mean, I pay for Hulu, Amazon, Netflix. We pay, but the Amazon thing, you get free because you have Prime. Yeah, but still. You still pay. If I didn't have Prime, I'd still pay for it. I mean, I'm still paying for it in essence. Uh, is now the time we pause and say thank you to everyone watching our content right now? When you you have so teeth, much yeah. to choose from. <laughs> Thank you for being here right now. Plus the plus Apple and it's a ton of subscription yeah. services. And I just saw there's a show coming out on Stars I want to watch. So now I got to figure out if I want to fucking pay for Stars to watch it. What show is it? Uh, it's called Dublin Murders. It's uh it's based on um this series of novels by Tana French called the uh, Dublin Murder Squad. It's like procedural crime dramas, and it's very serious and very good. And it's my she's my favorite author right now. And uh, <clears throat> so it's books based on that. Kind of like how uh. They did a very similar thing with the Robert Galbraith novels um, called Strike, which is on BBC UK, I guess. Uh, similar kind of show. Like, just uh, private investigator solving crimes, except in Dublin Murder Squad. Like, each book is a different detective from the Dublin Murder Squad trying to solve a fucked up, really well-written case. So it's like SVU. But yeah, but like, but like better. Like a, like a dare you. more serious SVU, I guess. More grounded in reality and less in pop culture and... <clears throat> Okay. Well, like how like how SVU started. I feel like that show kind of morphed. Kind of, yeah, yeah. That, how, how long has that show been on? That was like that was a show that was not originally a Is Law SVU and Order show. Still on Law and Order. I think so. Let me look. I, I feel like that was a show that was not originally a Law and Order show. Like they wanted to make it, and then they just ended up putting it like a Law and Order, putting it in the Law and Order universe. Halo series coming to Showtime, that's true. Yeah, it, it's just crazy, though, because now I, I find myself looking like, how do I keep track of all this stuff? I have to have this app on my phone called Watchlist where I add in all the shows I want to watch mm-hmm. so I can just look at a show and go, okay, here are the two places I can yeah, watch it. Yeah, have to keep a checklist. Yeah, you keep a checklist, and you realize, this was so much easier when I just paid one bill to the fucking cable company <laughs> and I bitched about how I wanted <laughs> And you knew Thursday I wanted a la carte viewing. Now I have it, and it's a nightmare to keep up with. Well, it's because you're paying <clears throat> different amounts for different things like if you had just had your cable bill it's like well i don't want that channel i don't want that channel this is the channel i want that would have been easier and i'm still paying for cable yeah there's so much to watch and also sometimes never anything to watch like yeah. you know when you're scrolling on all these apps for hours on end and you're just like well i guess i'll just watch more of this baking show instead because i can't figure it out it's that thing i was saying earlier about like tv paralysis like there's so many you're paralyzed by options yeah you know and like when you have too much to choose from nothing looks good yeah. Nothing exactly. stands out more than the other thing. Or like you're like, I don't know if I'm in the right mood to watch this tonight or get into this right now. Like especially but, starting a new show is daunting. Yeah, that, like, that's the thing. It's like I don't know if I have the time commitment right to get into it. 
That's why I'm really appreciative of new shows that are like the 25 to 30 that, minute range. That's why I was able to jump into living with yourself. Yeah, exactly. I was like, okay, that doesn't seem as daunting to watch three episodes in the same time you could watch one. <clears throat> I feel like you could binge it a lot quicker and a lot easier. Mm-hmm. Um, but that, like that's stopping me from Watchmen. I saw the episodes are what hour each or hour, so. Yeah, yeah, same. It looks serious and like it would require full attention. Yes. For an hour, and I find myself not being in a position to yeah. devote that kind of time same. very often. And hopefully you kind of remember the graphic novel or you've read it before. You have I've read Watchmen like I would, ten times. I would recommend. Really, someone said that it is not necessary for watching the show. Starting with last night's episode, I think they're gonna, they're really moving that it helps. Like Watchmen, the first two episodes, I was like, okay, it's kind of in the same universe. Last night, it was like, oh, no, now they're talking about people from the original. Gotcha. Watchmen is considered, kind of universally considered to be the best comic book ever written. It's really good. Watchmen or Miracle Man, like, there's it's a lot of schools of thought, but um, it's Watchmen's great. It's great. It's definitely, I have no idea if the show's good. I wasn't crazy about the movie, although it wasn't <clears> terrible, but the book is definitely worth reading. Really I, well written. I reread the book before the series started. Have it? Yeah, I have multiple. Co- I yeah. give it. I give it out to people. May it's I like borrow? when people tell me they're interested in comic books, I give them Watchmen. Can I borrow? Yeah, it? absolutely. I'll br- I'll bring it to you tomorrow. Thank you. Uh, I reread the um, the book before the series started, and I hadn't read it. I only read the book once before. I read it before the movie came out, and I remember hating the ending of the book. And I reread it before the series started, and I was like, "Oh, it's not. It's actually fine. It's not as bad as I thought." Mm-hmm. I think maybe I I just <laughs> missed something the first time, or it's like. So it's, is the book ending different to the movie ending? Yes. What do they change? Oh, it's DC Universe. I pay for that too. Damn. Do you care? If I mean, it's a, I guess it's an old spoiler, but in the movie, Ozymandias is setting up like a nuclear catastrophe, like nuclear attack. In the book, he's war- he creates life. He creates like this alien-looking <laughs> squid thing, and then teleports it uh, to New York, and then it dies and it explodes in a way that like its brain lets off this energy that kills like three million people. And is it the same energy as Dr. Manhattan? No. So they don't blame Dr. Manhattan no. in the comic? No. But oh. by that point, yeah, when the attack happens, Dr. Manhattan <clears throat> just leaves anyway. He's off world at that point, I think. Right? When he comes back, they remember they have their showdown, and then he's like, oh, you're right, this is the best for the end. I'm going to go to another solar system. He's like, boop, he's gone. Because in the, in the movie, Ozymandias is the bad guy, but he does save the world. Well, in the book. You could argue also it's the same thing. Okay. Yeah. And, Do- and Dr. Manhattan is even like, yeah, fair play. Yeah. Blame me and I'll just sit on Mars. <laughs> <clears throat> the best part about Watchmen 2 isn't even that story. It's the sub story that the kid reads at the, the Tales newspaper the stand, Tales of the Black Freighter, which is the best written thing I've ever it's read in my so entire life. so good. And I, I read that over and over again. Some, and people, some people don't like that. Those people are stupid. <laughs> Tales of the Black Freighter is so fucking fantastically written and so creepy and so cool. And it's based on that thing I'm obsessed with, um, the Pirate Ginny and the German Three Penny Opera that Brecht, made, I think it was Brecht, did in the, anyway, it's a whole thing. It's also where uh, Mac the Knife came from. It's a part, it's like this, it's like this trio of operatic stories about German industrialization and being a poor person in Germany at the turn of the century. Anyway, Tales of the Black Freighter came from that and it's fucking, oh, I love it. It's really good. Really good. Yeah, they didn't have any of that in the movie. No. They cut all of that out. It's in the director's cut, though. Oh, is it? Okay. It's like the uh, Gerard Butler animated bit. But it's just like it's just like animated over, over... Yeah, I watched that. Yeah, and like all of his crewmates are exploding and shit. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty dark. It's pretty gruesome animation. Yeah. I like... Yeah, it's it's good. I like the... It's a great song, I too. like the story arc for that character. It's like there's no... There's no redemption, right? It's just like your descent into the thing you fear. Mm-hmm. It's good. I'll watch the show. I don't know. After don't I'm know. done with all 120 episodes of Midsummer Murders. <laughs> How far are you How in many? Right now? 120, that's right. Uh, I just watched the second one. <laughs> <laughs> You're on your way. <laughs> you said you watched it like on, what'd you say, like Brit TV or? Britbox. 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 Is that yeah. just another uh, service? Yeah, it's like six bucks a month. It's also but my I nickname can watch in high English school. Shit. That's so, weird too, because so like four quid. Britbox was your nickname Five in high school. <laughs> <laughs> it's weird because some a lot of I don't understand how it works, but a lot of that stuff from Britbox is going to be on HBO Max, but then other stuff isn't, right? So you still have to have both if you want all of it. I don't I understand even, quite how it works. I haven't really looked at HBO Max. Yeah. They had their uh, big unveiling last hmm. week. Is it out now? No, it comes out in May. Oh, that's soon. I want to say May. Yeah. Box, HBO Max. 
So why is like John Oliver doing ads for it and stuff? Is he doing ads for HBO Max? He's doing like sarcastic because he always like shits on, on HBO. On, well, it's just because shits it's on the parent company. Parent company and, and yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. It's coming. It's coming. I think they they just announced last week that it's coming out in May. Okay, like, that's when they finally started releasing did, some details about it. Did you watch it. last week tonight? Sometimes. Did you see the one about immigration? Yes, that's I tweeted a, about it. A really good one. What was that like three weeks ago? Something like that, maybe four. They're about, they're about to go on break, aren't they? Don't they always like go on break like right after an election? They have one episode and they're like, all right, see you in February. Oh, I don't know. Do they? Yeah, because I remember that happened after the 2016 election. <sighs> after, after Trump won, they're like, all right, um, well, we'll see you in February. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> see, everything you described in that immigration one was so spot on. It's also so... Him and I were on the, on the same visa, too. So everything he was just... Describing about having to go back to the embassy and all that stuff and it's being worried that they wouldn't it was just like I've been exactly through all of that stuff Yeah, I still <sighs> remember when we were waiting to hear if you even got your visa or not we We're waiting for you to get approved Scary Refreshing times. the website like every five minutes because <laughs> it said it would take two weeks and like four weeks in it was still pending I was like what? It's not gonna what's, happen. What's my year gonna look like? That's yeah. probably the best show on TV that I forget to watch last week tonight. Yeah, I, that's a show that I was not at all interested in when they first launched it. I like, was. I, I was like, I don't, I, we don't care about this. And then like I would see like clips posted online. I was like, oh, this seems like it's actually pretty good. I remember being so bummed when John Stewart went on break to direct that movie, and then <clears throat> John Oliver was instantly like, I don't want to say better than John Stewart, but he had a newer energy, and he was just like, it was a different show, but it was awesome. And then I was like, I don't want John Stewart to come back. I just want this show to continue. <laughs> so then when they announced it, I was super, super excited. But I can't remember to watch it on on Sunday nights. And then by Tuesday, it's like, well, I missed it. I'll just watch it, it next your, week. Your, your stupid YouTube. app. I should. I should. <laughs> but it's one of those things where it's like, I don't. I won't watch it if I don't watch it live. Like I, I don't watch the news. Do I don't you, watch replays of the news. They upload the whole thing to YouTube. Mm-hmm. So why don't I you just they, like they subscribe? Like the main bit. Yeah, they don't yeah, do the extra stuff. I guess that's true. Oh, could you just like subscribe to it and like I don't know? If you I could just up remember to YouTube. fucking watch it too. I have HBO. I just it's like if I don't watch it Sunday, I won't watch it again. I'll just think I'll just watch next week's episode because it's already old news now, which is dumb and a stupid way to look at it. Yeah, but some that's, of it. I mean, some of it. way my brain works. Yeah, some of it's timeless. Like they did one about voting machines and like all yeah. that stuff. I think night. also the one about immigration is pretty evergreen. Mm -hmm. It's also like. You know, I'm the world. I'm one of the world's biggest Howard Stern fans, but I won't <clears throat> listen to old episodes of Howard. I won't listen to yesterday's episode of Howard. I can only listen to today <laughs> I on. I know, I know, it's dumb. I'll listen to moments, like crazy moments, but if it happened last week, it's like it's too far in the in the taillights. But like, you don't have a problem listening to Richard identify beer with his anus. <laughs> no, because <laughs> that's evergreen. That's great. That's evergreen. That's ever brown. That's anal green. Oh. Was he yeah. able to? Yeah, he got five out of six fucking beers correct. No. Yeah, he what did. What was the they bit? They get to in... guess, like, the brand? Yeah, yeah they, they would guess pour the them... brand and flavor. They would pour them into his arsehole, and he'd be like, oh, it's like some bubbly, Can't... nutty texture to that one. And he's Can't like, I think you? that's the banana beer. <laughs> Can't that kill you putting I think alcohol if, well, yeah, in your yeah, asshole? Yeah, if you do enough. Because it doesn't go through your stomach. Right, it doesn't go through your blood. That's how a lot of people who are in a really bad way uh, get drunk. will get drunk. Yeah. I heard something about, I don't know if it's a myth or not, women... Soaking tampons in alcohol and shoving it up their orifices. Why would you put a tampon on your nose? You, you, can, you can see the orifice. <laughs> well, you already said tampons. So it's pretty well, clear. I, I don't know if it was <clears throat> butthole or vagina or both. Why would you put a tampon on your butt? It's the same, with the same reason you put alcohol on your butt. It has the alcohol <laughs> on it. <laughs> there was, there, let me think. I, I read a, an article about a, I think it was a, a college frat party in Maryland. Where there was so much liquor being drank at the party that the air inside the house tested on the breathalyzer. Like it, it registered. <laughs> <laughs> so the house couldn't drive? I don't think it was like, I don't think the air in Is the house was above the legal limit. Were it just it, breathing, I right. guess. And, all and just like, like opening beers and <laughs> probably like a lack of ventilation. What if it was flammable? The, oh, the ambient air registered 0.01. So like wow. barely registered. Oh, okay. Still, though, the fact that it registered at all is pretty hilarious. Do you watch... Yep. You, you guys like, were saying you watch John Oliver. Do you watch Trevor Noah's Daily Show as well? No, I, I don't. don't. You don't? I hear good things. I watch it from time to time. It's really good. It's very different from what it used to be. He's a really funny dude. Yeah. Trevor Noah, is. like really funny dude. I love yeah. his accent, too. Yeah. Such South African, right? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. 
No. It's interesting. I, I, I hear that like the Daily Show is bigger globally than it ever was now because he's an international star. He's so big everywhere that the Daily Show has become like an international sensation mm -hmm. in a way that it never was with John with John Stewart. Which is funny because John Oliver says no one knows who the fuck he is in the UK. Uh, I, <laughs> so, like, I can totally, totally uh, I can totally corroborate that. <laughs> Gavin and I got into an argument one time. I didn't know who. It was. <laughs> there was there was some English, some American person on TV in England. And I was like, who the fuck is that? And Gavin's like, how do you not know who this person is? Do you remember who it was? Yeah. Who was it? It was Ruby Wax. Who? <laughs> Ruby Wax. She was like uh, England's American. <laughs> Ruby Wax. Never fucking heard of her. <clears throat> and I was like, do you guys have a lot of American people on TV in England that we've never heard of here? And he was like, he was like yeah, you just don't know much about your culture. Like, there would never be a person on a British person on TV in America that I've never heard of. And I go... <laughs> Oh, really? And he goes, I, I go, I guarantee you I can find one in two seconds. And he's like, you can't do it. I know them all. If I showed John Oliver and he goes, who the fuck is that? <laughs> and then after realizing who John Oliver is, if you go back and watch just like crappy Channel 4 sitcoms, he's in all of them. As like a guy that the main character bumps into in the car park. It's like, so it's like no important. It's like some extra. Yeah, he's just some dude. I have no idea who Ruby Wax is. I just looked I had up. never heard of her either. Yeah. I wasn't even sure if it was a lady or a... A D I don't even remember. Yeah. Well, first you asked me because we were in, in England at one point, and you were like, "Who is this person who's on every TV show and every commercial?" And before you even finished the sentence, I was like, "Richard Hammond," because <laughs> he was the guy who did Wipeout and Top Gear and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And when you were in town, he, he, we saw him like on five things in a row for some reason. Mm. That was so the trip. That mm -hmm. was the trip where nope. you tricked me into thinking that you had to give tattoos and suits, <laughs> and I believe you. You had to what? In the UK. <laughs> <laughs> he convinced me very, very, very well, did a great job <laughs> of convincing me that you, it was a law in England that to give a tattoo, you had to wear a three-piece Because we were watching something where someone was doing it in a suit, and you were like, why is he in a suit? I was like, oh, it's illegal to give a tattoo if you're not wearing <laughs> a suit. Illegal. He, went, he not only went for it, he got really annoyed. You were like... <laughs> Well, how, how does he like? How does he have the dexterity to do all this stuff? It surely catches his cuffs on stuff. And I was just <laughs> cracking up. <laughs> when did you figure out it wasn't true? It was for like five minutes later. Five oh, minutes okay. later. I felt fucking dumb. I like the idea of you went to a tattoo parlor and <laughs> like, why is nobody in suits here? I'm gonna report you to the constable. Uh, like Jack, you can't get your you can't get your fucking Tetris piece here. This place is not <laughs> sanctioned. It's running an illegal operation. I guess run a T-shirt. <laughs> <sighs> It'd be great mm. if you convinced me something like, uh, if you want to be a tattoo artist, you cannot have any tattoos yourself. Oh, that would be a good one. That would be good. I, I used to mess with you a lot more. I used to mess with you a lot more. Yeah. I was better than you were. No, I was pretty good. I got you a few times. You got me a few times. <laughs> My favorite time, I probably already told on the podcast, but it was when we were both in your living room on Xbox Live, and we were talking to someone in the community. It was some, some girl who I, I knew and you kind of knew as well. And uh, we would talk to her on the headsets, but I was secretly muting my headset. So so we'd be playing like Graw or something, and I'd be like, all right, follow me through here. And I'd mute it and, and be like, you dumb slut. <laughs> and Jeff would be like, oh, what? <laughs> but I, he, she, she never heard it. So I'd just like <laughs> add all this stuff to the end of my sentences. And he'd be like, why are you being so mean to her? You didn't know I was mute. <laughs> that went on for like 10 minutes. It did. That's such a tame... That's Prank. the level of pranks that we used to play in each other. You don't want to hurt anyone. Yeah. Nah, you guys, I feel like you did a lot worse. There was a lot of, there was a lot of love in our pranks. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How many times did you see Jeff's dick, you think? Oh, a bunch. Probably couldn't even count. Maybe four? Four or five. five, yeah. Damn. We, we were, speaking of old pranks and old stories, um, I've been working with Eric. We've been trying to think up, like, segments and things we could do on the podcast. Well, I got one with a robot fucking lawnmower that's great. Well... <laughs> Somewhat related to that, I uh, I remembered knife car. I just had him write down knife car on the list of things to do. It's from Sundance. What is it? I remember the name. We we stayed at that condo. Remember, uh, we went to Sundance. We stayed with uh, that was where Jason other Jason got the the red face. Yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. This is when we went, and we. This is when, um, I got really. This is when I peed on the snowman. I didn't go that year. Oh, you didn't go that year. Mm -mm. Oh, shit. Was it, uh, could I guess? Yeah. Was it like a remote control car that you guys attached a knife to? And yep. Went, really? And you had to walk <laughs> around the house with no shoes. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> and you have to be like, careful because no, no car could be anywhere. <laughs> and that's the segment he had me write down for this <laughs> like, show. What's the segment out of that? I don't know. It was, like, it was like, just write down knife car. We'll figure it out. 
<laughs> we can't wear shoes on the podcast anymore. Yeah, you never. You always got to be careful. Just that always going back and forth. There's a car things. somewhere with a knife that's going to give you. It's going to give you hepatitis. You know how some people are r- really into feet, like yeah. sexually. They want to like <clears throat> jack off on feet or yeah. smell feet and jack off <laughs> or look at a foot and jack off or no, touch Jeff, a foot and I jack off. We get the idea. Yeah, or jack off with a foot or whatever. I'm the opposite of that. I don't ever want to see anybody's feet ever. I don't want to see your feet. Don't do it. I'll throw up. You throw I don't like up? Feet. No, I, I don't throw up. I don't like feet. feet. You're gonna five show up on stars. Feet. I have, I have great five feet stars. Too, but I don't ever want to see people's when, feet. When we worked at the call center, I want to see you in sandals remember, or flip flops. I was um, I was sitting down. I was on the phone. Uh, I do not be- like green eggs and ham. Was before I, I was in a managerial <laughs> position, I was sitting next to someone who was also on the phone taking calls. And for some reason, neither of us was on a call at any time at that time. And the person sitting next to me just turns to me very calmly. Is like, there's nothing wrong with feet, right? And I was like. No, I guess not. And he's like, like a girl's foot, like that's cute, right? Like women's feet. There's, you know, there's nothing wrong with liking that. And I was like, no, I guess not. He's like, yeah, I mean, it's just totally normal, right? I mean, who? Was, with I, that. I mean, you probably can't, don't want to say their name, but do I? Do you remember who it was? I remember exactly who it was. Do I know them? <laughs> yes. Can you and give me like, some context? Clues? I was like, um, I gotta go. I was like, I just went, I'm, I'm gonna go on break. <laughs> was it a hippie? <laughs> I'll text you. Okay. <laughs> Is it someone it we know too? No. Of course. I'm not the same as you though. I could I could I mean I don't begrudge anybody who wants to jack off on a foot or like suck on a foot and jack off or like, you know I just used to, when when we like But ben, I don't I'm not into it. Ben would come and stay and he would just walk in the front door and like both of his socks would be off and oh. he was like why, Ben? I when I think about Ben, I think about <laughs> Eminem rappers and socks. rolled up socks. What about pizza boxes? I, that was after me. Oh, okay. That was the, uh, his Jack days. <laughs> rolled up socks. They, they would just come off, right. Like, he, he would, would take off his backpack shoes on and, and his socks, socks and there would somehow be a nine socks on the ground. Dude, my socks are the last thing that come off every day. Well, my shoes don't come off until I'm ready to go to bed. Really? It's kind of yeah. gross. You gotta take your shoes off when you go take home. Stinky off. feet. No. no, I mean like the bottoms of your shoes. Like yeah, you walk I, around. I take shoes off just because it's if if I've used the bathroom here, I'm just traipsing feces all over also, my house. Also, it's nice to be like without shoes in your own uh, house and stuff like that. It's more comfortable. Mm. I like shoes. I like the comfort of shoes. Huh. I like my feet are protected. I mean, like like a little house, foot armor. Some house slippers. I do yeah. have some. Sometimes I'll wear when I think about it. But I'm just, I'll wear these shoes till ten o'clock tonight, probably. Yuck. Weird. Do so you wear them in the bedroom? No, but I won't go to the bedroom until it's time to go to bed. Are you? I I put on pajamas the first thing when I get home. Like I I won't be wearing. Actual like day clothes. I like in five minutes of being home. I don't know why maybe it's a holdover from the army Like one of those things that gets stuck in you that you just can't reprogram But I feel like I have to be ready to go at all times. Oh, like, that makes total sense like if so, like I just I feel like I need to be like I just grab my keys and go like if whatever happens interesting I'm ready to go well we at any point in time. I don't have to like get a ready dad, So I don't know if that has anything to I mean it's that. always been that way. I, I think it probably is from the army like it probably is one of those well, things we, where you just we like untrained the stupid way you, you held a fork. So that's true. You should be able to untrain that's this. True. How'd that's you hold true. a fork? Like a caveman. He would hold it like this. Like the fork was in here and the ties <laughs> were straight up, and he would eat like he was shoveling it into his mouth. <laughs> you don't have tonight, all the dexterity. You when need. you get home, Jeff, tonight I want you to take your shoes off. I'll try. I, I'll try to remember. I have to. They say it, eating is different for left-handed people. It's a whole. The whole. The world's not aligned for us. So could you play Xbox? On the stick like that. Instead of using your thumb? Yeah. How would you do? How does that From work? From all your years of forking that way. It's using a fork's not use, like using an Xbox controller. I mean, if you've got the dexterity to that like not a one to one comparison, dude. I mean, that's a stretch. It's a video, though. <laughs> do you think it requires a lot of dexterity to eat like this? It's no, the only There's de- precision in forking. Especially if you want to like get all the you ingredients. You think this the- is less precise than this? <laughs> <laughs> no. Weirdo. No? I, I don't know, man. I, it, it seems like this is very basic. The way you held it, it, it reminded me of like a caveman. Like you're yeah, just that's what you used to call me. Yeah. You and Bernie and, and George used to always make fun of me at, at T&I lunches for it. That's why I stopped. I was like, fine, I'll learn how to do it the right way. Yeah. Oh, are we getting a fork and a knife right <laughs> at now? At Super Salad. We used to always eat at Super Salad. Saw, you guys it, would always make fun of me at Super Salad. Super Salad and uh, furs. Fuck, at furs. That place is gross. Yeah. Why are you giving me this stuff? Yeah, you can dexterity. You could practice. Good dexterity. So it's like this or like this? Because Michael the does way. these. The other way. way. This way. Yeah. And then upside down. No, come on. You make you look. <laughs> What's your problem? 
I'm also left-handed, so this is like my dominant hand. So I still will eat like this a lot. <laughs> and then oh, I'm like, oh, right, I got to do this. <laughs> but yeah, it's just like... How do you cut your food? Like this. So you hold the fork. I use my fork. I use the fork to hold it. Uh huh. And then I cut with my right hand. And then when you eat? I just pick up the food, put it on. Okay, that's normal. Or like this. It's the, it's the English way of doing it. See, I always do the thing. I cut it and then I switch hands for do the you, fork. Do you, I, I do that too. What? You, what? How do you do it again? I cut just like that, and then I switch to my other hand for the fork because I'm right. See, that's what's wrong with being a right-handed person. Yeah, that's Left the downside. Left-handed people, we can e each hand is just as important as the other. Like for a le for a right-handed person, when you eat, most right-handed people, your left hand is a placeholder and it's useless. You got to do all the action, give all the work in your right thing. hand. You're wearing your right hand out, <laughs> eating when you're not evenly distributing the workload to both hands. Left-handed people, we have it hard. We learn from an early age to do to do as much as you can with both hands. I need to demo for the English audience. So legit, not even lying, Americans eat like this, the right-handed ones. Well, that is quite, so stupid. Yeah. And not quite that awkward. That is so What's stupid. Wrong with nothing. It's nothing wrong with that. That's how nothing, you I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it. I'm saying you're making us look worse. All right, you do it. <laughs> True right-handed yeah. American. Is this your chocolate bar? Yeah. Is this vegan? <laughs> <laughs> no. I don't know. Why don't you feed it to get to to Gavin after cutting it? Have you have you had any slip ups at all? No. Not even like you found out afterwards. What are you? How are you cutting your it? Your fork is backwards. Yeah. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> Performance anxiety. Oh, yeah, of course. I'm worried that this is too hard to cut with this knife. It might lose. You're also. Thanks, Dad. Jesus. How are you? How are you cutting? This this isn't gonna work. That's because you're holding it weird. <laughs> Why are you holding it like that? <laughs> this isn't gonna work. That that bar's too hard for it. <laughs> you could have. A lot of people saying it. Jeff's right. I don't know what I'm right about, but I agree. <laughs> Yeah, you can't cut it, but you were holding a fork like. Jesus Christ. I don't want to do this anymore. Uh, this apparently, it's like a. Knife. That's <laughs> what I kept saying. No one believes you. Everyone keeps trying. <laughs> apparently, it's like a politeness thing. Like you're like in America, you're taught that you're supposed to swap the hands, and it's rude if you don't. Yeah. But for me, I was just taught to just eat eat with because I've already got the food on the fork. But here, it's rude. Got to keep it classy. I don't know. I'm not. I'm not normally a. I know those fancy dinner parties we're going to. I found person. out. I found before we end this podcast. We're I just want to say I found out recently that you're mm -hmm. vegan. That you were. Yeah. We're trying it. I just want to say, Gus, that I think it's really cool. No <laughs> jokes or anything. I think it's awesome. I really. Why I, do you say that? Because it's it's first off, it's better for the fucking environment, mm. and it's better for the world. And for somebody who wanted to burn the planet down with him when he died, <laughs> no, I no, think no. that you... I wanted the planet to burn down the day after I died. I just think that you are a very socially conscious, responsible person, and I appreciate it. I think, and I'm not making a joke at all. I'm I, not being silly. I got old. Do but, you not hate the environment anymore? He drives I, an electric fucking car, dude. Well, and that, it's that's, his that's second my, one. He had a hybrid first. You say it's for your convenience, but it, it, and that's, that's a tough guy you. way to say it, but I think that you do give a shit. And I think that <clears throat> like I do, I do think that being vegan is fucking super responsible, especially with the problems that we have a ahead of us in climate change. And I just think it's great. I, 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 I was so happy and excited to hear that I'm not. I don't want to do it. Let's but... go get a vegan lunch tomorrow. Okay, I'll go. Where do you go? What, what is your favorite vegan lunch? Um, I hate mothers. Mothers is okay. I don't uh, like it. Have you been to Citizen Eatery? No, I've never heard of that. It's pretty good. It's over on Burnett. Okay. I'm gonna get vegan lunch with you. I can't do it tomorrow, but I'll go sometime. We'll go sometime. <laughs> okay. All right, well, let's wrap this up. All right. Uh, thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you guys next week. Bye. Bye. Watch Extra Life. We have a question for you. Please leave us a comment. We were talking amongst ourselves after the show. What is the hottest part of the foot? Yeah, oh. where do you put your load? Yeah, is it like, uh. what, toe, top, arch, arch heel, heel, sole? Bunion corn. Nails. Nails. Let us know. Cr Art, uh, zero. Yeah. yeah, what's the hottest part it's of the foot? Number zero. Leave a comment.